Hello and welcome to my channel if you're new here and if you've been here before, welcome back. I want to talk today about St. John Henry Newman and something that he's quoted as having said. If you recall, um, a couple days ago I did a video on Pachamama being tossed into the Tiber and being in the river there swimming with the fishes and how happy I was about that. And within, I'd say, 24 hours, the Vatican had their response, and I'm not sure who it was at the Vatican, really, who came up with this information, but the article was by an Andrea Tornielli, I'm guessing. Anyway, I'll link everything that I refer to in the description box, but in her article, she quotes St. John Henry Newman as saying, the use of temples in these dedicated to particular saints and ornamented on occasion with branches of trees, incense, lamps, and candles votive offerings on recovery from illness, holy water, asylums, holy days and seasons, use of calendars, processions, blessings on the fields, sacerdotal vestments, the tonsure, the ring in marriage, turning to the east, images at a later date, perhaps the ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical chant, and the curie liaison are all of pagan origin and sanctified by their adoption into the church. They use that as a justification for the Pachamama being in that church and being used in the ceremonies in this Amazon Synod. Well, the funny thing is, that didn't really sound to me like something that would come out of St. John Henry Newman being the Catholic convert from Anglicanism. So naturally, I went digging around and I looked at the source that they drew this quote from, which is his essay on the development of Christian doctrine concerning the adoption of pagan elements by the church. So, I have, a, I have a bachelor's in journalism. So, what does a journalist do? We go look for the source and we see what it really says. And the funny thing to me about that quote is it seemed like stuff was left off of it. When you take a quote and you leave out stuff that applies to the text, that's called proof texting. And so I wanted to see if he was proof texted because it just seemed kind of odd to me. So I went and I hunted down the document and one of the things that I noticed is that, yeah, they, they left off more than half of the paragraph of what he wrote. So I'll read to you the beginning part because they just took the bottom part of it and not even really the bottom half of it. It goes, the example set by St. Gregory in an age of persecution was impetuously followed when a time of peace succeeded. In the course of the fourth century, two movements or developments spread over the face of Christendom with a rapidly with a rapidity characteristic of the church, the one ascetic and the other ritual or ceremonial. We are told in various ways by Eusebius, and then he puts a footnote there, that Constantine, in order to recommend the new religion to the heathen, transferred into it the outward ornaments to which they had been accustomed in their own. It is not necessary to go into a subject which the diligence of Protestant writers has made familiar to most of us. Okay, so by the way, I did go check out those footnotes in Eusebius and I will have that link too. I believe that'll be linked via um, newadvent.org. It's a great online Catholic encyclopedia. And the funny thing is, is that when you go look at those quotes, it talks, well, the footnotes speak to how Constantine changed things. So it really doesn't go with what this is saying. And I thought, well, how would he be an error on this? This is kind of an odd thing. And he really doesn't actually say um, what they're saying that he said basically saying, oh, well, the church baptized this stuff. And I'm thinking, where would this come from? <coughs> well, I then proceeded to dig around further into this document, and it turns out that he wrote it when he was an Anglican. So in the process of writing this, his whole belief system changed. And there's actually, if you look at this document, there's the introduction to it, and then there's a sort of postscript to it. And what happened was he was writing this document and he was on his way to the conver conversion of Catholicism. He was in his conversion process. And it was in the process of being published and printed when he felt really convicted about all this. And so he converted. And in the process of his conversion, he then um, handed over the documents he wanted them to be modified and edited and changed so they fit with real Catholic teaching. Because at this point, he's a Catholic and he's looking at it going, yeah, this isn't quite right. And so 
and the process of the people who he turned it over to looking at it, they came to the conclusion that it was better to leave it as it was. And it would be a demonstration and a reflection of sort of the change in him, if you will. So he wrote this when he was Anglican and even talks to that paragraph about how, you know, Protestants is sort of like a, a beating, beating a dead horse, if you will. Um, this topic of saying that, you know, Catholicism just baptized these pagan activities into the church and it wasn't the case. So did he say it? Well, yeah, he wrote it when he was an Anglican. Once he converted to Catholicism, he didn't feel this way anymore and he had asked for it to be changed, but it was left as a demonstration, as a proof of the change of thought, how he thought as a Protestant when he was Anglican versus his mindset as a Catholic. So yeah, technically, I guess he did say it, but not in the way they're portraying it. So I don't know what's going on in the Vatican. I mean, it, it pops into my mind. Either somebody didn't do their due diligence in researching this quote and finding that this document was actually written when he was an Anglican before he converted, in which case that quote really doesn't apply. He wasn't speaking as a Catholic when he said that. Or else someone purposefully proof texted this to make it look like he was okay with pagan idols and idolatry. And on that argument even, a friend of mine pointed out to me that in the document, when he says that about those items, he doesn't mention anything about an idol to be worshipped. He talks about the use of incense, lamps, candles, branches of trees, holy water, holidays, and those sorts of things. We use these things as sacramentals. They're not idols to be worshipped. Yeah, if they're part of a ceremony, it's because they are sacramentals. And by the way, they come from our Jewish lineage. There are so many things that were carried from Judaism into Catholicism because Catholicism is the fulfillment of Judaism. So naturally, yeah, I mean, think about it. The um, vestments that were worn going into the Holy of Holies, the candles that were there, the incense, this stuff isn't unbiblical and it isn't uncatholic. It's, it was brought in from Judaism to Catholicism. It's, it's in the fulfillment. So, yeah, as a Protestant, someone might balk at this stuff and say, oh, well, you know, the pagans do this. Well, yeah, the pagans copy a lot of stuff that the Christians do and the Jews did. So it's not that unreal. And God commanded the burning of incense and various things that are listed there that people would try and cite to the pagans, but it's not of the pagans. It was directed by God. And yeah, you know what? The devil likes to copy the the things that God does in a lot of ways. I mean, seriously, look at how many things that the devil has tried to copy and make his own, and he can never fully do it. So, yeah, pagans might copy stuff, but it doesn't mean it belongs any less to the Catholics or to the Jews. It just means that they copy. So, did he say it? Words came out of his mouth, yes, when he was an Anglican. Did he say it as a Catholic? Nope. Did he want it revised and changed to reflect his newfound Catholicism and his fullness in the faith? Yes, but it was left alone to show the contrast. So, as I said, I will link the documents that I pulled below in the description so that you can go see them for yourself because you might want to check them out too, like I did. I wanted to do the legwork to find out what was really said and what was the background to it. So, um, there'll be a link to, um, I think it's three websites that I pulled from. And if you want to go check out, feel free. Um, if you like this video, please click like down below. And if you'd like to see more videos, please click subscribe down below. And there's a little bell that'll let you know when I have more videos up. Um, and I should have another video actually on the way to explain another issue. But thank you for watching. If you've lasted this long, I hope you learned something. And I, go, I hope you go check out the links and see for yourself what he really said and when he said it and get to see this all in context.